Um, obviously, that was an awesome game for the Bears. Um, tough game for Illinois State. Um, you know, I'll start with this. The hardest thing I had to do was just see Dan right there. You know, me and Dan are really close. And obviously, Illinois State is my second favorite school in the league, and um, they played a great game, and they're really, really good. In fact, with all, so we've played everybody now. They're probably the hardest for us to guard. Um, but, you know, it couldn't happen to a more deserving kid than Jared Dixon. Um, a close second would be Ryan Kreklo. But um, just happy for our players. Uh, we found a way to win a game that we probably should not have won. Um, and, and, you know, the reason we were in that situation is because this is the first game in a long time where everyone didn't bring it, where everyone that was supposed to do what they were supposed to do, whatever part they play on our team, didn't do that. And um, it, it, it almost, almost bit us, and in fact, should have bit us. But fortunately, we won it. And, you know, this time of year, a win's a win, and we just move on. So fire away. Coach, your thoughts during the mad scramble right there? Well, you know, um, it's funny because I thought the shot that went in tied it. I thought we were down by three. You know, I was very, I was, I was disappointed it was a loose ball. And I was almost headed down the sideline to shake his hand because I figured there's no way we can tie it now. And uh, we always talk about, you know, being locked in for 40 minutes. And one of those things that we talk about doing is getting 50-50 balls. And if you watch this game, Illinois State dominated the 50-50 balls throughout the game, especially when we went to our second unit tonight. But, man, we got a 50-50 ball, and, and J.D. just luckily threw it in. You ever think about how far you've come since I remember last summer you were saying that you didn't, you just stopped teaching defense because it looked so ugly. Um, and now seven and five, second place in the Valley at this point. You ever think about how far you've come and as a team? Well, sometimes, I mean, we don't think about it too much as we're, we're in the middle of the season, but you know, we, we're not surprised that our players improve this year because we have high character kids and we have kids that, you know, almost all of them kind of have a underachiever, uh, oh, excuse me, overachiever mentality. And um, when, you're, when, you, when you view yourself as an overachiever, one of the things that you do is you, you constantly improve. And um, you know, our guys have been improving all year long. Now, I, here's what I'm more surprised about, that seven and five in the Valley is second place. Now, I'm really surprised that seven and five gets you second place. So we, we, we still got a lot of basketball left. So that's what I'm most surprised about. The fact that we're seven and five, I can get that, but, but in a normal year, you're not in second place. Anything else for Coach? Dana, did you, do you remember watching her shot when they <laughs> lost to Val Poland? What were you thinking at that time? And Dude, I remember watching which shot? The, the one that Valparaiso beat him by. Oh, yeah, I thought you were asking about the shot. I made it Illinois State from here. No, I, <laughs> I, I don't remember that one. Yeah, yeah, Creighton was in the league, right? No, right, um, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I do remember. Why, me, and, me and Dan, see, we talk every day. I mean, every day, all day, every day, all day. And... Um, I remember watching. It's, it's a hard way for them to lose two times in one year. Um, and that's a good team. I mean, that's a really, really good team. And that's a banged up team. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I've seen that shot. Yeah. I like Jamie's bet. <laughs> <laughs> and then you talked about, I mean, Garden Fane tonight. How, obviously, it was difficult for your guys. You know, we've elected to defend people one on one. And uh, with about, I think, the eight minute media was the first time in the last, I guess, how many ever games it is now that we've done this, that we almost started to double team because he's first team our conference player and he's so mobile, knack the score. And, and here's the thing about Illinois State tonight. They, they, they played so bad their last game tonight, they were really, really locked in. And Phil Fain had been challenged. You know, your article about his fouls um, probably got, got them locked in. So you, you're probably part of their game plan. <laughs> Why it's part of mine most of the time. Okay? <laughs> but, um, no, so Phil Fain was really, really locked in tonight, and he was, he was, he was, he almost had us double team. I mean, he is good. And then second half, we just had no answer for Yarborough. And the only time we made a slight little run there is when Yarborough needed a break, and he went out, and we made a little run, and kept us within striking distance. So that, that was good for us. Coach, that miracle shot probably doesn't happen had Josh not driven the lane and got the foul. Just talk about how big that was. I'm glad you asked that. There were a lot of things that led up to that shot that our players executed. We, we, we elected to foul Phil Fain, and he, he split. He made the first one, missed the second. Okay, that kept it, I believe, a two-possession game. And then uh, before that, we had Webb drive it and laid it in. 
Right. And they got it back, and I think we may have fouled it. No, it was 17 on the shot clock, or that they reviewed the play or something like that. We elected to let it play out. No, they, uh, Yarbrough made the layup really quick, made the layup, and then we got it out of bounds, and he drove it again and laid it up and got fouled, and then they called a timeout, let us set up a little defense, and we just got lucky. But, but there are a lot of little things that our players executed to lead up to that, and um, it's just a, just a lucky win, to be honest. So just, just blessed, to be honest. You mentioned um, early on throughout the season that you have to make free throws. You have to make them. You have to make them. Your team made 17 of 25 tonight. I mean, your team was fouled 15 times in the second half. Yeah, so in the first half, there was only two. The Illinois State had two fouls at halftime. So what, what we were telling our players, our terminology for this game was bite the rim. You know, they're kind of in the same situation we are. They play eight players. We play eight players. Uh, Phil Fain can't get in foul trouble for them. Tulio can't get in foul trouble for us. Um, we were telling our guys, you got to bite the rim. And in the first half, we did a little bit, but we shot 10 threes. We weren't making them. Tulio wasn't great. Second half, we started attacking their zone a little more, attacking their man a little more. And when you play as slow as we do, Sometimes you get passive, and that's what happened to us in the first half. But being down tonight forced us to kind of play a little faster, more aggressive. And then we went to the free throw, free throw line and knocked them in. We needed every one tonight. Yeah. Now that you guys are kind of within striking distance of being atop the league, do you use that at all? No, because um, we, we all know that 10 places, four, four and seven, I mean, it's just three games. Again, this is, not, this is not a typical year in the Valley. I can't speak for every team. We're focusing on putting ourselves in a position come three weeks from now to have to win three games in three days, not four and four. That's it. the number beside it doesn't really matter because, like I've said, and, and I mean it this year, anyone can beat anybody. I mean it's just it's just mind blowing. Who won Loyola game today? Did they? Who won that Loyola. game? They won that game. Was it at Loyola? No, 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 no. won at Valpo. Well, any, anybody can beat anybody, and, and, and the league has proven that. So we're just trying to get these guys better and um, kind of get through the dog days. We're, we're, we're almost through the dog days where people can start to see March a little bit. That type of game maybe earlier. How are you feeling? Uh, it, it's surreal. That's all I can say. And um, I, I just I just credit to my teammates, really. Um, we just kept fighting until the end. I mean, the game seemed out of hand. Um, they looked like they were going to pull away. Then we got a couple layups. And then it was a big steal. I think uh, Dre got it. Yeah, Dre got it. He got a really big steal. Then the ball was just going everywhere. 50-50 ball, as Coach Ford says it all the time. It just comes down to it. And then everybody's just dialing on the floor, which I get. And I just happen to pick it up. And I'll just let it go. And there you go. What's kind of going through your head during the mad scramble and just getting, getting um, just Just um, just be ready to, I mean, I was kind of far back. so. So I was just ready if the ball came to me, just, I mean, I knew we were gonna have, I was going to have to shoot it because it was like five seconds left. So, I mean, it just happened to come with me, man. So I just tried to bank it in and it went in. You ever had a shot like that before? No. Um, that's, that's like my first ever buzzer beater. I mean, I had, I had, I had a game winner in high school, like, kind of like that. And it felt like the same way my senior year in high school, but it wasn't at the buzzer, but that was the first time I ever did something like that. Yeah. Do you ever practice from half court or anything like that? Uh, I mean, every now and then, everybody just after practice and stuff is throwing up half court shots. I mean, you never know. But here with five seconds left there and that ball lose, you don't have time to look at the clock there, do you? I mean, no, you have no. Any idea how much time's left? No, like, like I said, I remember someone, they were inbounding it and they were just saying foul or as soon as they get the ball. So the ball was scrambling, so I knew it wasn't enough time to just like do anything. I mean, you just have to pick the ball up and throw it in. So, I mean, this is how that went. How to feel out of your hand? Just kind of see the the flight man, path. If it, it felt as soon as I let it go, I was like, this this got a chance. Man, it's either gonna <laughs> bank in, bank in, rim out. I was like, it's on target, and then back toward. Ryan, to see your guy pull something up like that, so that what's that mean to you? And man, my brother, right just, here, man. just a great great team win, man. I mean, that just we never gave up down the stretch. It looked it looked bad down mm -hmm. six or so with. 40 seconds left, but I mean, that's that's what you get when you never give up, and you just keep believing in each other, man, and, and that last play, I think we had everybody on the floor, except, except for maybe J.D., he was back in the backcourt, mm -hmm. but I mean, without every single one of our guys on the floor, I mean, that we just don't come up with that, so I mean, that's just a, a great team win, mm -hmm. I mean, that's I'm going to remember that moment for the rest of my life, so. Brian, how fun was that pile of midcourt there? 
you know, I've seen, I've seen videos about that. I mean, people winning state championships, going, winning the conference title. I, I, that's all I've ever seen was videos of it. I've never been a part of one of those. So, I mean, that that's just a surreal feeling. Um, just so surreal. And the, and the stakes weren't low. I mean, this moves you guys into second place this mm -hmm. late in the season. Yeah, just like five games left yes. now. I mean, if we take a game out, if we, if we lose that game, I mean, who knows? I mean, we can't predict the future, but I mean, it just puts us one one game in the one game more in the right right position, um, and that's just we're just looking forward to the next game and just follow through with this momentum that we got. So, Craig, do you feel like you guys are maybe kind of finally getting the brakes going your way, something like this, you know, or you know, previous years seemed like the bounces always seem to go against it. Yeah, I mean, we we've had we haven't had the easiest careers here. I mean, but I mean, we just we just keep believing in each other, man. So. I mean, we got a great team here. Uh, every single person on the bench. Um, I mean, we can't do it without everybody. So, hey, two wheels here too. He <laughs> <laughs> just ate for eight today. <laughs> <laughs> eight for eight, 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 right, Rick? Yeah, this guy's playing great, man. Yeah, two wheels. You're gonna have to wear the headband every game, man. Yeah, yeah. Bro, he was yeah, I think so. I'm gonna side you on the day. Julia, what was the battle like down low with uh, Fane, especially in the second half there? Uh, just a lot of physicality. Both of those athletic players, so I feel like there's a lot of physicality down there. Was that uh, the toughest battle you've had down low so far? No, no, no. I think, um, I think, um, what's his name? Scotty. Um, you know, oh, Pippen. You know, Pippen. Yeah. A lot of good players. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. he was the most big that I played against. You two, Kreklo and Tulio, you guys are manning up on Fame and, and Yarbrough. And coming in, you had to know that uh, defense you had to be on tonight. What was the mindset coming into that to prepare for, for those two guys? I mean, we just knew that, that we had to be nasty. Uh, I'm undersized tremendously. And uh, I mean, I just rely on my teammates, too, just with uh, great pressure from the outside. Uh, sometimes I got to put myself out of position uh, just because he's so much bigger than me and, and uh, a lot more weight. So. I just got to rely on help side, and it's a, it's a total team effort whenever I'm guarding uh, players like that because they knew I'm on it's a mismatch from the start. So we just rely on everyone to, to come down and help, and yeah, I can't I can't guard those guys without without help side and stuff like that. So, Tulio, what's going through your head when the shots went here right there? I was just happy. I was happy for everybody. It was amazing. The weird thing is, I, I had a feeling that it was going in. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else for the players, guys? Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations.